All right, here we go. Let's do a quick review of Unit 9 Exponents. Hopefully this... Uh, ...for you to test. I'm going to power through these. Feel free to pause and slow me down, but hopefully this is kind of bringing things back for you. Make sure it's fresh before the test. Do we know what an exponent is? I hope so. The chapter is called Chapter 8 Exponents, so we got to know what an exponent is. So this is an exponent. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 uh, is really 3 to the what power? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3 to the 5th power. So... Remember we said that 3 is the base and 5 is the power or the exponent. So that's what this whole chapter is about and all the cool little rules that go with it. Uh, sometimes we have fractions and letters in it. Remember this is the same thing as everything on top is getting cubed. Everything on bottom gets cubed. Another way to write, man, my cubes are rough. Woo! Let's see if we fix that. Cubed and cubed, or we can really write that as x times x times x if you wanted to, or 4 times 4 times 4. All the same stuff there. Really, I think the best way I, I would express this one is x cubed on top. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. I think to me that's the nicest way to write that one. But they're all equal, they're all the same thing, depending if you got to expand or whatnot. Excellent. Uh, how about this? What happens if we, if we take a negative to an even power? Guaranteed to be positive. And really it's going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. This one is going to be just plain old 81. But technically, what does it mean? It means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So remember the powers are even, they can't solve because negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive. So this is positive. If it's an odd power, then you end up with a negative answer. Awesome. How about this? Can I take this and condense it? Sure. 5 times 5 times 5 is what? It's 5 cubed. And I have x to the what power? x times x times x is x cubed. y times y times y times y is y to the fourth. If you want to go ahead and multiply our number out, 5 times 5 times 5, uh, we're looking at it's 125. So numbers, you can simplify variables, leave them alone. Nothing you can do to them. Write them like that. Fantastic. What else we got in here? Then we start talking about negative exponents and zero exponents. So what does a negative exponent mean? So it means that it's going to flip it to the bottom. We're going to say this is really 1 over 2 cubed. Uh, and you can think of that as 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, or you can think of it as 1 over 8. That's the same thing as 1 8. Fantastic. How about this? Could you write it using negative exponents? Sure. This is just the same thing as saying x to the negative fifth power. So that negative flips it to the bottom of the fraction. We're good to go. How about this zero power? Anything to the zero power is one. Now remember that zero is only going to this, the base of x. So it's really four times one, which is just plain old four. So four x to the zero power is really just four. Awesome. Very good. So let's go on to our rules. So once we know what an exponent is, we get these rules here. So this is a rule, product rule. When I multiply, product means multiply. So when you multiply things with the same base, you add. So if I have anything with like a to the m, and I'm going to times it by a to the n, the base is a. So I'm going to say, what do I do? They have the same base. I add the exponents. So how does that look with this problem over here? You know, numbers are just numbers. The coefficients, I'm just going to multiply. 3 times 5 is 15. And, oh, I kind of picked a weird example here. I add them. So x to the 4th uh, times x to the negative 4th, you add them, you get x to the 0. But we just did the problem. What is x to the 0? That's just like multiplying it by 1. So it's really just 15. In this case, you get plain old 15. Awesome. How about when I take something to a power? The power rule says if I take a to the m, and I raise the whole thing to the nth power. What do I do here? Well, when it's a power to a power, m to the n, I actually multiply. This will be a times n. It's kind of weird. You multiply, you add the exponents. When you go power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So what does that look like uh, in a problem over here? Well, three. everything gets raised to that third power. So this is really 3 to the third power. a to the negative 3 to the, is to the third is going to be multiplied, so b to the negative ninth. And that's really, if it's not written, that's b to the one. There is a one there, so that's like b to the third when I multiply it out. Then go ahead and simplify our numbers. What is three to the third? This is the most common mistake. People in the test are all going to put nine. It's not nine. It's three times three times three, which is 27. 
uh, a to the negative ninth, b to the third. And if we're saying, let's not write this with negative exponents. So what do I do? Well, those negative exponents got to move to the bottom. So 27 stays on top. b cubed stays on top because it's positive. But this a to the ninth has to go to the bottom. So we've got to rewrite it without the negative exponents. We only want positive exponents in our answers. Would be as raw of, I don't know if that's making it better or worse there. Holy cow. I can't leave that. I'll feel bad leaving that there. Let's try this. That is B a little bit better. All right. And then finally, we've got the quotient rule here. Quotient rule, uh, quotient means divide. So what's the division rule? If I have the base of A, raise that to the nth power over base A to raise to the nth power, what's the rule here? I subtract the exponent. So when you divide, you subtract. When you multiply, you add. When you power it, you multiply craziness. Not too bad, though, I think, once you uh, look at the real examples over here. All I do with the numbers is just reduce them or whatever you can. If there's anything to be done, 4 6 is actually 2 thirds if you reduce it. And then this is kind of weird. You're going to say m to the fourth minus negative 2. So be careful. You're subtracting the exponents here, but because it's subtracting negative, it's really like adding. So this is 2 thirds m to the sixth power. So those are all our rules power, product rule, power rule, quotient rule. That's 818283 in a nutshell. Wrapped it up with a little scientific notation. Our scientific notation is just for using really, if we have really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers. So really, this means move the decimal five times. So this is four, three, eight. So move it one, two, three, four, five. Fill that in with zeros. And you know, what number am I looking at? This is 438,000. So when I have a big number, sometimes it's easier to write it in scientific notation. Or, in this case, a small number. This means move the decimal 6 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I put these in, I'm looking at 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 2, 1, 7, 5. So now we've got this really, really, really small number. So again, scientific notation, really, really big, really, really small. So here are some other numbers. What if I give you the number? Can you make this scientific notation? Sure, it's, you want to go three. You want one number, then the decimal. And then you can cut off wherever the zeros are. And I'm going to say 10 to the what power? Well, decimals are normally here. I moved it one, two, three, four, five, six over. So I've got this going on. I know this one's going to be small, so it's going to be a negative exponent. The reason this is negative, I mean, you're multiplying by one over 10 to the six. That's why this is happening these really small numbers with these negative exponents. So this is 3.82 times 10 to the, how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8. Awesome, very nice. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's take a look at the different rules. We can do our whole product rule, power rule, quotient rule, all that stuff. Well, I wasn't going to show all that, but that's okay. Uh, let's take a look. Let's cover this one up for now. Yes. All right, so with scientific notation, the rules are still the same. Numbers like numbers, 2 times 3 is 6. And when I multiply, the base is still 10 in both of these. So when I multiply, add. So 8 plus negative 4 is going to give me this. Fantastic. How about this one? I have power rule. Raise it to a power. Same thing. This is like saying 2 to the third. Numbers are always the same times 10 to, this is negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. And really I'm not going to leave 2 to the third is really 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 times 10, negative 24. So crazy small number here. Negative 24, you're moving that 24 times. Really, really small number there. And then last but not least, we get the quotient rule. So treat my numbers like numbers, so I end up with 12. And I'm going to times this. The base is 10, so I'm going to say negative 4 minus 6 I actually get more negative, so it's going to be to the negative 10th power. Just be careful on this. Is this scientific notation here? No, this is like a weird example. This is 12. The decimal is not in between them, so I really want 1.2. So what happens here is I had to move the decimal 1 to the left. When you move the left, you're going to bump this up 1. Well, up 1 makes this negative 9. It makes it more positive. So technically, this is your answer, and this is what we're looking for in the test. Uh, that's your answer in scientific notation. Excellent. That's a quick review of the entire chapter. Make sure you understand the review. If you understand the review, you're going to ace the test. Uh, excellent work. Good luck on everything. Peace out. Keep it real.
Have a listen to your teachers in school. It's time now to have some fun. If you raise them to a zero, then the answer is one. Raise it to a one.